Americans' obsession with British culture spans the decades, from the Beatles to the Royals. And now, even a popular fast food chain is hopping across the pond, to the delight of the American palate, called Pret a Manger. Pret a Manger originated in 1986 in the UK, and we moved to New York City in 2000, and um, Washington DC in 2009. In the next few years, they expect to have 80 locations across the U.S. Really healthy and fresh food, and it's reasonably priced. And what makes this British import such a phenom? Well, I think Brett is one of the most effective uh, sellers of fantastic natural food very, very quickly with very friendly staff. Pret prides itself on making everything fresh in small batches all day long in on-site kitchens, like this one in Washington, D.C. From hot ham and cheese croissants to unique salads, sandwiches, and wraps, like this combination of chicken, bacon, avocado with tomato and baby leaf mix, or low-fat wrap with Pret pesto sauce, avocado, pine nuts, spinach, and tomato for under $7. I used to study in England, and uh, that's where I first discovered uh, this place, and I love their food. I love how fresh it is, and it's you know made the same day, and I, when I found out that it's here in D.C. as well, I've made it routine to come here every morning. It's very European. A lot of good variety for us, especially for a, you know, fast food. But they did have to make some adjustments for Yankee tastes. Well, first we had to um, change the coffee style. So uh, in, in Europe, people drink espresso-based drinks. In America, they drink filter-based drinks. So our coffee program had to change completely. Secondly, we had to have more focus on salads, which was very important for us. And thirdly, we had to put more protein in some of the sandwiches for the, for the American male. So it's healthy portions for the females and, and bigger portions for the males. And they also had to hold the mayo. We still realized that the taste profile was a little bit different than the United States. A clear example was extra thick mayo, the British love. Well, Americans hardly don't like it much. But Pret doesn't compromise its missions of sustainability and giving back to the community. So containers are made of biodegradable corn products. Recycling is central, and fresh foods not sold go to charity every night. In Washington, D.C., we donate around six to 7,000 pounds of food a month. And this British chain is clearly striking a chord here in the colonies, even with its name, which is French for ready to eat. And if you're ready to build, you can stop for a bite at one of the most popular international quick serve imports, IKEA. You might know IKEA as the put it together yourself furniture mega store from Sweden, but it also assembles gravlocks, lingonberries, and world famous Swedish meatballs. They do meatballs. They're, they're good. You, whenever you shop, you work up an appetite, and the meatballs are the way to way to go. The sauce is actually what's so good about it. Uh, it's iconic. Uh, people drive miles and miles and miles to come here and, and, and just they hit the restaurant because they need their meatball fix and then they go. Another popular Scandinavian original is raw salmon cured in salt and dill called gravlax. I had the salmon, the salmon gravlax platter, which was delicious, and squash soup. And the food's really good. And just like the rest of IKEA, it's a no frills serve yourself concept, like this one near Minneapolis. It's kind of a plain folk kind of meal, which is what you'd expect to see in Sweden. It's not overly dressed, but it's a good presentation and good value for money. It was under $10 for the three of us. It's just $3.99 for meatballs and mashed potatoes swimming in that Swedish cream-based gravy with a side of lingonberries. Those are flown directly from Sweden. They're like a cross between cranberries and raspberries. But not everything Swedish is a hit with the American audience. U.S. customers prefer less fish on the menu and hot mashed potatoes instead of the cold, sliced ones they serve in the motherland. IKEA has also added a number of classic American comfort foods. Uh, macaroni, and she ate all of her vegetables. So that's one thing that's blessed. I didn't think she'd finish them, but that's the first thing she ate. And then the cornbread's really good, too. We also have some things that cater more to Americans, which is chicken fingers and fries and uh, ribs for the kids. They like the, they like the mac and cheese, just like we have our chocolate overload cake. Again, that's more of kind of an American item. But there's still plenty of Swedish home cooking being dished out. And check out the quadruple decker tray carts. Even those are an IKEA invention. Our, our founder, Ingvar Kamprad, uh, really felt strongly about not just the furniture being designed with Swedish heritage in mind, but also the food is an important uh, aspect in everyday life at home. 
cross country in New York City. Folks looking for a truly cross-cultural bistro find it at Cafe Bene. The concept was modeled after a 17th century European salon. We wanted to make this vibe where they can just study and think and just make themselves home, like in the middle of like this chaotic Times Square. This is Cafe Bene's flagship U.S. store. The original is in South Korea, where they now have more than 750 locations. They've introduced a few new ingredients to New Yorkers, like the nutrient-packed mizu garu. It's a Korean traditional powder. It's got whole grains, barley, white rice, black rice, and beans. Also, we use vanilla and sugar to make it extra flavorful. They add it into their carefully crafted lattes. The coffee beans are from all over the world. It's a mix of South American and, and coffee from Indonesia. And then our decaf, which is fair trade, organic, and the single origin coffee. It's much like an Ethiopian coffee. It's pretty awesome. Very fruity, very floral. Fair trade and community involvement is important to the Cafe Bene team which sponsors youth charity events both at home and now in the U.S. But they rely on their South Korean roots for this topping that spruces up their giant shaved ice concoction, red bean paste, the finest money can buy. When we create the menu in, back in Korea, we ask our very oldest bakery, which makes the little red bean buns, to make our red bean paste. But in the U.S., they had to cut the red beans with sweeter strawberries to appeal to American palates. The food menu has expanded beyond its original Korean options to include sandwiches and salads. We had to incorporate those menu items to our menu in order to serve like local people and make our menu localized. But the all-time fan favorite both in the U.S. and South Korea is Cafe Benet's Belgium Waffles. They have that nice sugary crust on the outside, um, so when you cut into them, it's a little bit crispy and it's sweet with the fruit and the whipped cream and the caramel and the chocolate sauce. It's delicious. I lived in Brussels for a summer, so I always want to find the kind of waffles that I had in Belgium. And this is the only place I've ever had that had the same kind of waffles. Compliments to the chefs just don't get any sweeter than that. In any country, things go better with Coke. But which one? With hundreds of Coca-Cola flavors, a famous chef puts them to a taste test. You know, a lot of people can't have more than a few sips of this. Plus, a sneak peek at McDonald's Test Kitchen and Tasting Lab. 